So I'm going to do some shop talk right right now. So I'm going to just jump off of my off my notes. I got like 10 pages of notes. I'm sure that'll excite you, Adam. He always looks for my notes at the end of service. So, but um, you know, as I was praying about what we would share and uh, for the closing of this year, I, I thought that what my, my original plan was is to deliver the new word for this coming year. And I really felt like the Holy Spirit corrected me on that. And he says, you know, let's not go into the new year until we recap the old year. And um, I was like, okay, Lord, that terrifies me. <laughs> so... Because for some of you, this year has been maybe a banner year. Maybe that there's been some incredible uh, just um, breakthroughs. And some of you have been battling all year long. And I don't know. And and some are in the mix of things. Um, So, um, and I've watched it. I've been able to experience some of those things. And and, and, and cry with some of you guys. And rejoice with some of you. And at times... Even, even, even in, the, in the mix of things, Lord, I've, I've been even the one like, God, show your, you know, where are you in this? Have you been there before? You know, where are you? We're waiting. We're depending upon you. And um, I feel like that that's been our journey this year. But it's been, a, you know what? Out of it all, I am grateful. I am grateful. The Lord has been through this journey with us. He's never left us, or he, and he has never forsaken us. He has loved us along the way. His love has not changed one bit for each and every one of us, and I'm thankful for that. So I just wanted to recap where this word came from. So last year, starting in October, me and Pastor Jim started to talk and some of the leadership about what do we feel like the Lord is doing, and you know, what is he speaking for this church and I remember Pastor Jim gave um, a devotional that he does on breakthrough. And he's like, Pastor, I remember in prayer group, he came to me and he's like, Pastor, I really feel like the Lord wants to do something. And, 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 and breakthrough was, was kind of like part of the theme of that. And I was like, okay, that's a good word. But I'm scared, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. Because... The thing with me is like I really want to 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 validate that. I don't want to give like um, a false a false hope or or rush into something without really truly like pressing in. And and Pastor was just kind of hearing some of that, and I started to pray and and seek the Lord. And I had some things that the Lord was stirring within my heart, but I really didn't have clearance on them. And then he started to kind of tug my heart that way and started to, to, to really speak some of those, um, those confirmations into me. And I was like, okay, you know. And, and a lot of times the Lord speaks through me through, through dreams. It's just the way he, he kind of speaks to me. And I remember having kind of just a confirming dream about it. And I was like, okay, Lord, one more. You know, I want one more confirmation. And I remember... Um, Kathy sent me the text, and uh, just random, and it was a picture of the sky, and underneath it, and it was literally the day I think I was praying for it, and literally, and and I haven't told nobody the word, like I just kind of bottled it up in my heart, and just me and Pastor were about maybe a couple others, and Liz, Liz knew about it, um, were were just seeking the Lord on it, and she sent me the, the 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 group text to me and Liz, and it had a picture of the sky breaking, breaking open through the clouds, and she wrote under it, breakthrough. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. So it was the sun breaking through the clouds, and he, and he spoke breakthrough. And she sent that to me, which was just kind of unusual, but it was just every, there was the confirmation that I was looking for, and immediately, here, here, great man of faith that I am sometimes, I went to Liz, I says, did you tell Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> did you tell her the word? And she's like, no, I didn't, and then when she came up to my house later, I was like, how did you hear about it? 
did you talk to Pastor Jim? And she's like, no, why? And I'm like, that's the word, that's the word. So, um, so, so I, you know, I'm not, what I am doing for you guys right now is, 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 is attributing this word, this, this, this theme of 2023, not to myself, but this is God's word over us. That was his spoken word that I felt like it was a Raymond word for, for us this season. And we've seen some incredible breakthroughs through this year. We have. Um, we've seen Micah, you know, and how many years have you been battling seizures? Seven years. So, and we kind of seen this breakthrough of this seven year uh, journey that the grants have gone on. Um, we've seen. Uh, Adam, you know, just dealing with things, and, and, and he, beginning of the year, he was walking with a cane. I don't know if when, when you lost the cane, but uh, he's been walking without a cane since then. My own personal life, I've had some battles. I, I remember Xavier in the middle of summer um, coming down with, with C. diff and just really ill, losing weight and just... Lots of doctors and, and going up to Children's Hospital and, and trying to figure out and going through many different cycles of antibiotics and probiotics and all of these things. And um, finally, you know, it was just like the Lord started to shift, shift us in, in our approach and just, just started to speak breakthrough over him. And, and that's when breakthrough happened. See, think of, you know, I can kind of go through the, through the, you know, the audience a little bit, the Potters and Jeff and, and going through his battle with cancer and just, I don't know, was it like a month ago or three or four weeks ago, he got the news, free and clear from cancer, right? You know, a Dan, same thing, going through some, some health crises and, and, and here he is today and, and, and doing well. And so we've seen some incredible breakthroughs, but even in, in the midst of it, We've seen, some, we've seen some things that could, 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 we've really faced tragedy. Let's just call it that. We've faced some tragedy. Um, one thing I know that our church lost dear to us was, you know, um, Jason, we lost Amanda. So um, we didn't lose her. I don't know why I even say it that way. But she went home to be with the Lord. And I was seeking the Lord in this. And... Um, if you got your Bibles, but turn to, to Hebrews. So Hebrews 11. And I think, yeah, so verse 35. And it says this. But sometimes I think this, let me read it and then I'll, and then I'll share it with you. It says, women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mocking and scourging, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, um, they were tempted, they were slain by the, the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins, in goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Hmm. Blesses me. They wandered in the desert and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these have obtained a good testimony through faith. They did not, rec they did not receive the promise. Now, whoa, 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 what was that? They did not receive the promise. It says God had provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. And I remember just being with Amanda, and I remember she didn't go down. That ship didn't go down. That ship went up. <laughs> that, that girl never gave her faith up. She never gave it up. 
she continued to believe. And then it says that, that God had provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. And man, sometimes when we lose people or, or they go home to be with the Lord, it's like we're left with a lot of questions, right? We're like, oh God, why? Why can't they still be with us? You know, why, why don't we still have them today? But if we go right to the next, the next chapter, which it really there is no break, it's just these chapters are here um, put in later um, into these letters. It says, therefore. Now, if we see that word therefore, that therefore is, uh, there's a reason why it's therefore. It's wherefore is the therefore. And it's, it's referring back to what Apostle Paul's thought was just about all of these who have laid their life down for the, their faith in Christ Jesus. And it says this, and, and this is the amazing thing, is, it, is this. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, man, we got an audience in heaven. You know, I know, I know the, the Spicers, they have, you know, they lost Justin this year, and it was tough. And, and I, you know, and, we've, and I was involved in some of these, these funerals of people that are younger than me. And um, I'm thinking, wow, this is, this was, it hit me hard. Three right in a row within a month. And, um, and uh, I was just like, Lord, like, this is, this is difficult to deal with. This is hard as a church and as a body to, to take this, this brunt all at once like that. And uh, the Lord just is reminding me, and even as I think back to it, that we have a promise. And sometimes what we do is we try to gauge things off of the here and now. We gauge things off of the temporal and not the eternal. But we have to remind ourselves that God has left a promise for each and every one of us in that, that even, even now there's still, there is a great cloud, there is a balcony of saints. That word, witnesses, means the saints that have gone before us. And they're waiting for that trumpet to sound. They're waiting for that moment when God comes back, Christ Jesus comes back to the earth in the air and that trumpet is sounded and and Jesus Christ himself commands those who have gone before us to go and to gather up their bodies and to to resurrect them. And then in a moment's time, the word says that, that we will be raptured up in a twinkle of an eye with them and caught up with the Lord in the air to go to heaven with them to celebrate the, 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 the wedding feast, right? And that's good. That's, that's the promise that we have. And that's what Apostle Paul is saying, is that in that time, they are waiting for that moment along with us right now when Jesus Christ himself perfects his church. He gives each and every one of us that resurrection body that we await for. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, when we face these, these things, I just want to remind you guys that, man, if, if some of these that we love have gone down in faith, I think of Pastor Gordon a couple years ago and those, you know, them are, them are difficult things to, to contend with within ourselves, but we have a promise that still remains. God is faithful. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, I want to speak to you guys in regards to this breakthrough just, just, just real quick. I'm not going to take a lot of time. I don't want, want to hold you guys up too long. But when I was thinking about this, this word breakthrough, I was like, God, like, I want to speak into some that, and even into myself right now, to, to, to lift my faith and to lift your guys' faith to continue to press on, Right? Because I don't believe that this word breakthrough is just for 2023. And even Pastor Jim has been talking about this. If you haven't seen your breakthrough yet, it's coming. It's coming. But we got to continue to fight and we got to continue to fight it in faith and believe, right? We can, leave, we can leave those promises and those inheritance off to the side. And, and we might never see them, Right? But we can also fight for them, and we can believe that God is a promise-keeping God. 
and that he will fulfill what he has said that he will fulfill. Amen? So with that, I want to share two thoughts. The first is this. Let me go to my notes on this one, though. I don't want to miss out. Actually, before I go there, let me tell you three things real quick. Let me tell you three things. I want to go three things. First thing, three truths about breakthrough. I'm just going to skip right to this. Three truths about breakthrough. Number one, breakthrough sometimes takes time. There's a waiting time. And in, in Isaiah, it says, those who wait on the Lord like, shall renew their strength. And that word, that word waiting can also be translated into hope and have confidence. And those who put their confidence in the Lord, those who put their faith in the Lord, shall renew their, their strength. And that word renew means to actually exchange it for something entirely new. So we can take our weaknesses in the moments that we are that we are waiting for God to break through in something in our life and exchange it for God's strength. And God will provide his strength in the waiting. So even if he makes us wait, even if that, that time doesn't happen immediately when we're looking for a breakthrough in whatever area of your life it may be, it might be physical, it might be emotional, it might be relational, it might be spiritual. Maybe you're just spiritually dealing with some heaviness right now and you're going through it. You're dealing with all sorts of just fiery arrows of the enemy. And you're like, God, where's my breakthrough? I need to be, I, I need God, I need you to show up. And, and it seems like he's just delaying a little bit. The word says that even if he delays, as we put our trust in him, our confidence in him that he will give us his strength to wait for it. That's the truth number one, is, un, is, is, is breakthrough doesn't happen immediately sometimes. I call it the slow roast. You know, it's the crock pot. God, God likes to, to take his time in things sometimes. His timing isn't our timing. You know, we want it immediate. We're in this society that just wants things right now. As soon as I ask, Lord, I want it to just show up at my doorstop. It's kind of like Amazon, you know. I want prime delivery, right? <laughs> two days, Lord, that's all you got. Two days, you better show up. If it ain't in two days, I'm going to be calling somebody, right? <laughs> that's how we, that's, 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 you know, and I don't even know how, they, I don't even know how it happens, Right? How, how I can order something online and it be on my doorstep in two days. But that's how we treat God. But sometimes God doesn't work that way. and He wants to take time. The second thing is, is, is this. Is even in the waiting, when he, even when he gives us his strength to, to be able to endure, the second thing is God gives us appetizers at times. So me and my wife, we got a, an amazing gift from the church. For, um, it was like a gift card to the Harbor, Harbor House, which is a nice hotel up in Celeron. And um, so we wanted to go there. And so we went up there. And what's really unusual about really nice restaurants is, is it takes time for you to get your food, your, your main entree. But what they try to do is they try to create an environment that is... Um, that just is, is, is just an environment that makes it incredibly pleasant in the waiting game. Like, what they do is they create an atmosphere, they, they have nice music, they usually have really good service, but one of the things they do in all of those things is they usually bring out some sort of a, um, an appetizer on the house. Sometimes it could be bread, or you know, if you go to Olive Garden, it's breadsticks and salad. Um, but at the Harbor House, what they do is they bring up this, this, this platter of all sorts of different crackers and breadsticks and, and, and bread and some different dipping sauces that you can dip it in. And, 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 and I don't even know, like just different butters and different things. I'm telling you, like, I could just live off that. <laughs> Like, forget, just get, I, I, I just show up to their doorstep and say, just give me the free, the free thing on the house and some water and I'll be fine, guys, you know. 
But um, I don't know if it works that way, but I should try sometime. But so we went there, we ordered, and it just it surprised me. They came out with this huge appetizer of all sorts of breads, and I'm a carb guy, so this really spoke to me. And so I'm just eating and consuming all these different delicacies on this platter and enjoying it, thinking, man, this is, this is great. Who cares about the food? Like, <laughs> life has just become really good for me, and no matter how hungry I was when I showed up, I was being totally entertained by what they were giving me. And the same is true with the Lord, is even when we're waking, waiting for breakthrough in our life, the Lord gives us appetizers. He brings things into our lives that we can celebrate in the moment while we're waiting for something else. Amen? So we can celebrate the little things, the little victories, right? And a lot of times, that usually leads to the big victory. It's those little battles that God continue, continually helps us and empowers us to, to, to live in and to win And when we start to celebrate them, we start to realize that them things are kind of lining up to help lead us to the big um, victory that we're we're searching for, right? And then the second thing that in this this idea of, of God giving us or providing appetizers for us is this, is even if in, in, in seasons of time when it doesn't seem like anything is going our way, The Bible tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice. So when we're hooked up with family, the thing is, is we can can celebrate other people's victories. And you know what we're doing by doing that? All of a sudden, God's victory is more important than our own personal victories. It's like, I want to see God glorified. It doesn't matter you know, where I'm at right now, what matters to me is I'm going to be celebrating God being glorified and magnified even in another person in the moment. And what that does, I believe, starts to jumpstart our faith. It kind of gives us that, that momentum we need when we're stuck to start to, to move forward again. And I think that as we become like-minded with others that are operating in faith, it empowers us to start to, to, to use those muscles and faith muscles again to get things moving for us. And God honors that. So that's the second thing, is God always provides us little nuggets or little appetizers to help empower us to continue to, to move forward in our breakthrough. And then the third truth about breakthrough that as I was thinking about was this. I put it this way. When I was a kid, my parents would give me, you know, whatever for dinner. My parents were huge on vegetables. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't skip the vegetables. You couldn't leave the table until every morsel of the vegetables were, were consumed. And my dad loved lima beans. And I've told you this story before for some of you that have been here for a while. But he loved lima beans, so my, my mom always liked to just kind of like really just kind of cater to his, his palate, so she'd make lima beans occasionally. And um, my dad just thought they were the best thing in the world. So, and since my dad thought they were the best thing in the world, he thought they were the best thing in the world for me, too. As a 12-year-old boy, lima beans are not the greatest thing to eat, and, and he's like, oh, it's full of iron and all these things, and gives me the whole Popeye spiel and all this stuff, and so I would just be choking them down, down like gagging, just gagging, trying to hold them things down, and um, yeah, Sharon, please don't give me another bo- can of lima beans again. <laughs> I told this story, and Sharon actually sent me a can of lima beans. <laughs> <laughs> for Christmas. That's why I'm telling it after Christmas and not before Christmas. Didn't want to remind you or give you any uh, uh, gift ideas. But why I say that is, is, is I put it in my notes, I just put basically don't skip the beans. You can't skip the beans in, in God's entree. And what I mean by that is you can't skip the means. I did this just to help kind of stick this in your mind. Is the means are important to God, 
in our life, we always say the end justifies the means. So it doesn't matter how we got there as long as we get there, right? We can cheat. We can, we can, we can take shortcuts. We can bypass. We can do anything we want just to get to where we need to arrive. And as long as we arrive, then that's what matters the most. And it doesn't work in God's economy. God cares about the journey. And he cares about when we're in the journey, what's being developed. And many times God puts us into these moments of trials to not, to, not only to glorify himself through breakthrough, but also to glorify himself through the character that is forged in us through the waiting period. Amen? So God is at work. And he's working in you. And the thing is, is when we see that we're in those moments and in those times of, of fierce trials, God isn't doing it because he's disappointed with us. He actually says that he puts us in those moments because he's entrusting us with something. He's giving us a gift and he's trying to give us a gift and impart, imparting some character, some quality of himself in but it is only learned and experienced through suffering sometimes. It even says in the Word of God that Jesus learned obedience through suffering. And you think that's the Son of God. If, if the Son of God had to endure suffering to be able to express at, at a fuller measure the obedience God calls us to, then who are we to say we should be able to bypass that, right? So God, God is treating us like sons and daughters. He loves us. The word says in Hebrews that who is he that the Lord doesn't discipline? He does discipline those he loves. So when we go through these moments and go through these, these tough times, don't try to just get through it as fast as you can and not just pause and be still in that moment and say, God, what are, you, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to teach me in this moment so that when I receive my breakthrough, not only do I get that gift, but I get the gift of your character too. Amen? So these were the two things that I felt, and this one was really strong to me, and I just really want to share this with you. But I think that that was important to kind of share those kind of that process of breakthrough a little bit to understand where I'm going. But the first thing is, is first of all, it's not our job to force breakthrough. It's our, our job to look for breakthrough, but it's not our job to force breakthrough. And the thing that came to me as I was praying even this morning, the Lord spoke to me, is what was the one thing that kept Moses out of the promised land. You're right. He forced something. So when, when, when the Israelites were in the wilderness, they came to the rock, and, and God told Moses to speak to the rock, and water would come out. Now, they've been to the rock. This is the second time they've been to the rock. The first time, God said to strike the rock. And he did, and water gushed out. The second time, when they come back to this rock again, and they're in, in need of water because they're in the desert, God tells Moses the second time, now you speak to the rock, and God's blessing will come forth. But instead, Moses goes to the rock, and he, and he, and he, and he, and he commands the rock, and he yells at the people. He goes, must I bring forth? He's taking the credit. Must I bring forth to you water from this rock? And he smoked, he, sm he smoked the rock. He hit the rock. And out of God's mercy, he poured forth water to provide for the people. But after that, he spoke to Moses and he says, because you hit the rock, because you forced, you took, you forced that breakthrough on your own strength and your own reasoning in your own devices, it'll keep you out of the promised land. So don't force the breakthrough. Allow God to bring the breakthrough to you. Amen? Amen? Don't make that mistake. 
That's the first part. Because too often, I just know myself, man, if I'm in it, I'm looking for the eject button. And, you know, I'm just going to give it to you in layman's term, what I'm telling you about. You know, when, when I'm going through a tough time, it's like, God, I want out of this thing. And if you don't get me out of this thing real quick, I'll figure a way out of this thing, right? Instead of being patient and saying, God, I'm going to trust you in this. I want to see your full manifestation of your power. I want to see what you want to do in me. I want to see what you'll do in the situation. Instead, I'm just saying, okay, God, now how, how can I manipulate the situation? How can I figure my way out? How can I become my own provider? How can I become my own rescuer, right? Out of my own strength and my own reasoning. Man, don't do that. It's dangerous. Because guess what? Jesus, God will say, around, you're going to go around the mountain another time. And, you know, sometimes I've gone around that mountain way too many times. I'm like, Lord... Okay, I'm, this time, this time it's it. When I finally get it, that's when I really, truly receive not my own breakthrough, but God's breakthrough, which is the best. Second thing is, is this, and this is what I felt like the Lord really wanted to speak to us today. So I, if, if you get nothing else from this, get this. I truly believe that God is intentionally calling us not to become disinterested in what he tells us. And that word disinterested means casual. It actually means like, kind of like, I could care less. And you say, not me, right? I said that when he told me that. That couldn't be me, Lord, right? I, I don't struggle with disinterest, but I do at times. You know, when we're in the battle of, of life at times, we can start to really start to struggle with some of the assaults of the enemy on our mind saying, just like the enemy did to Eve. You know, did God really say that? Does God really care for you? Is God trying to hold something good back from you? Right? Right? So some of them, if we, uh, if we entertain those thoughts, it's dangerous, guys. It is incredibly dangerous. And what it is steeped in, and this, is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this really was something that I, I felt like the Lord was telling me, it's steeped in pride. Because just in, just even in, I'm just going to give it to you in just like maybe like um, the most kind of childish, childish kind of cartoonish kind of illustration. As you guys know, the, 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 um, the cartoon Winnie the Pooh, right? Which character was dis disinterested about everything? Right, right? And I felt like the Lord told me which one of those characters was the most prideful. I was like, huh? Tigger. That's what I thought. But I felt like the Lord was telling me Eeyore. Eeyore was. Because he was willing to define truth by his own skewed perspective. And the same is true with us at times. We try to determine what God is going to do off our own perspective, right? Off our own experiences. When God's saying, oh, I want to try to do something totally new. I want, to, I, want to, I want to bring revelation into your life. I want to do all of it. I want to give you, I want to blow your lid off, right? That's the God that we serve, a God that is incredibly big, is full of, you know, just... Just unmerited love for, I mean, just, just, we don't even, we can't even experience or can't even comprehend it right now. And God's saying, I want to reveal a new part of my nature to you. I want to, I want to show you new things. I want to take you to, to higher heights and deeper depths of me. And we just kind of get to that point when we, we get frustrated with our own reasoning. And we say, ah, uh, I don't really care. But we should. 
we should be incredibly interested in what God is doing in our lives. We should want what God wants to bring into our lives. We should fight for it at times. We should, we should, we should just press in on them things because God wants to do something new in us today. Amen? Let me share something with you guys. And this, I'm going to close in this. If you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah 58. And on that thought of being disinterested, sometimes I feel like the thing is, 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 is it's like I don't feel like God's going to break through for me. So I feel like just to kind of, out of self-preservation, I say, well, I don't, want to, I don't want to become embarrassed if I'm the only one left out, right? Ever been that way before where you feel like maybe it's a childhood thing or something of that nature? And it feels like, oh, man, I could be the only one left out in God's goodness. So I'm just going to pretend like it just doesn't matter to me at all. And so we act like we're not, we don't care, but in reality, we truly do. And the thing, though, the crazy thing about disinterest is, is, is it's, it's, self, it's like this deception of self-preservation that leads to destruction. You guys understand that? So when we become to that point like where we tell God, well, I just don't care anymore if, if I get this breakthrough or not or whatever the case may be, or I just don't want to press in more right now because I think maybe you're going to fail me. God's like, who am I? I can't fail, right? I am, I am the God of love and love never fails you. Amen? So, all right. So Isaiah 58. I know I'm all over on, the, on this, but... I hope somebody grabs some nuggets out of this. Isaiah 58.8. And actually, if we go up to this, it says that this, it says this. It says, is this not the fast that I have chosen for you to loose the bonds of the wicked and undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Breakthrough, Right? This is God's plan. Break every yoke. Not just some. The word says every yoke. God wants to break every yoke. And then it starts to give us what we need to do to cooperate with that. And then it gives us three things. The first, it says, is it not to share? This is, this is the fast that God calls us to. This is the lifestyle of what God calls us to do. First, number one, he says, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And basically what God is saying is, my children, as they receive breakthrough, should be the most generous people on the face of this planet. So guys, if you want breakthrough, be generous, right? Share what you got. Look for those that have less Whatever it may be, it might be time, it might be resources, it might be just words of, of encouragement, whatever it may be, be generous. Act as your heavenly Father would act. Amen? And then it says right down there, it says in verse 8, it goes into the promise of that. It says, then your light shall break forth like morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and that's the one thing I know Tim says, that when breakthrough happens, it happens suddenly. Amen? Speedily. And your righteousness shall go forth, uh, your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And then, and then it goes on, and you shall call, and the Lord will answer, and you will cry, and he will say, here I am. The second thing he goes in to say is this, and it says, if you take away the yoke, from amidst and the pointing of your finger and the speaking of wickedness. So the, th the second part, so the first part, guys, we want breakthrough, practice generosity. The second part, if you guys want breakthrough, more breakthrough in your life, the second thing is exercise mercy. Be forgiving. One of the worst things I've seen people held in bondage that keeps them from what God wants to put in their life is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. 
taking, taking God's goodness and, and, and applying it to their life, but then, then holding other people to a standard that they can't hold their, on their own. So the word says to practice mercy. And then the third thing, and it, and it just goes on. It goes through all of these promises again. And he shall satisfy your soul. You know, he just goes on and on and on. And, and he says, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of the streets to dwell in. And it just goes on. And then the third thing it goes to say is this. And if you turn your foot from my Sabbath, from, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath your delight. And this is the, th- the third part, which I feel releases God's breakthrough in your life. First is generosity. Second is practice mercy. And the third thing in Isaiah that it tells you to do is to delight yourself in the congregation of people. That's what you're doing today. To practice the Sabbath. To, to, to desire to be with God's children, celebrating and worshiping him, encouraging one another, speaking truth into one another's life. We do those three things. The word kind of delivers to us the promise of his breakthrough. Amen?